Hi, everybody. Just wait till you guys catch up with me. Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. Waiting for you all to catch up with me and for me to see you guys all in here tonight with me. As you can tell, I still actually have um, a little bit of no voice, which is why I wasn't doing this uh, on my day that I was supposed to be doing this. Because um, I had no voice due to my um, my cold, this wicked, wicked cold that I have had and that has uh, been plaguing me for four weeks now. So I will uh, um, look forward to sharing this with you. Um, hello, hello, hello. Hi, Erin. Hi, Carolyn. Nice to have you guys joining me here tonight. Um, I'm happy, happy to have you guys with me. I'm happy to be back here. As you can tell, I'm still a little raspy. Got a raspy little uh, voice going on here still. Um, welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, as you can see, I have two little box. Hi, Barb. Nice to see you guys. Um, I've got two lovely little boxes on display. Not just one. I... Uh, I whipped up uh, a little Christmas example to share with you guys as well. So, hope you guys are enjoying this last week of August. Um, can you believe it's the end of August, you guys? Like, holy crow, where has the summer gone? My goodness. Um, I know for me, I was teaching all summer long. Um, I just finished marking last week and getting the grades in. And right now I'm in panic mode because I actually have to get four websites up for four classes that start again next week. I start again teaching on Tuesday. Hi, Linda. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. So it's like no rest for the weary in between. And as I've been uh, dealing with all of this, I've been uh, dealing with a, a cold. And I'm bringing um, a new instructor on board with me who's joining to teach this semester as well. Um, the class, because there's five, actually, of the public relations classes that I teach. And this semester, we are going back completely live in class. There are no more, uh, no more for, for our program. There's no more uh, remote, um, which is the first time since COVID started that we have been completely back in the classroom. So uh, it's busy, busy, busy. Um, so I am very happy to be back with you guys all this week because I've been missing actually doing the presentations. I may need to stop and refresh my breath, but uh, or my voice actually a little bit as we go along here. So this tonight is um, the long-awaited um, Minte Papers uh, Nana's Kitchen tea box, gift tea box. And as I mentioned, so this is the one that I'm going to show you how what how to do tonight. And it actually looks like this from the top, from the sides, uh, from the back, uh, from the bottom. Um, and actually, it does, uh, you can pull out tea bags from it. So you actually lift off the top and pop tea bags in. And they'll actually fall out just so you can stack the tea bags in there. And when I was working on it, I thought, what a great little, oh, thank you, Carolyn. What a great Christmas gift this would make. And the timing is perfect. Uh, it would also make a great Mother's Day gift or a great birthday gift for somebody. But um, I actually whipped one up. It, it really doesn't take long to do this. So I actually whipped one up. Um, and the paper I used for this one, this is paper I had because I had just, I, I had it because I love the paper. Uh, Graphic 45 Let It Snow Collection, and I used an ephemera package with it as well. And so I created another one um, just using, uh, it does not take a lot of paper to make. It's just a couple of sheets of 12 by 12, and I used one of the ephemera packages. Um, and this is some of the paper that's on sale in the store right now actually. Um, I love this paper too, Linda. It, it's gorgeous. Um, I, th I think, yeah, this is dry now so I can pull it off and you can see how it looks on the inside. So this is what I'm going to show you guys how to make. Um, so I'm just going to set that one aside 
and we're going to work on this and I will show you how to make it. It is a kit in the store. Hi Susan. Nice. Thanks for joining us. It is a kit in the store. It does come with complete instructions in the store. Um, but I will walk you through how to do everything tonight. Um, to speed things up a little bit, I have uh, done a little bit of the prep ahead of time. But I will show you what I, what I have done. Um, and so um, it has used one of the full 12 by 12. And it's actually not the full set, but um, the 12 by 12 um, collection of the Nana's Kitchen. There's a couple of sheets that it uses. There's three sheets that we use of the Nana's Collection. Um, in particular, um, we are using... Um, um, Nano 2, Nano 4, Nano 5, and what it is in particular, it's it's one of the sheets that has, that we need, has the, and I can't even show it to you because I cut it all apart. It has the, um, it has the china cabinet on it because we've, we've cut out the china cabinet from that actual sheet. And then the other two pieces that we're using is a piece that has, it's a 12 by 12 sheet that has the spray pattern on it. And the other one that has, um, oh, what's it look like? It actually has, um, we are using it, and it has, looks like this on the back, and it, it has the green sprays on, the, on it. So I will walk you through. Um, and then the other thing in the kit that it comes with, it actually comes with a 6x8 add-on pad because we do use some paper out of that. And it comes with a package of um, ephemera, the Nana's Kitchen ephemera package um, with a whole bunch of different pieces of ephemera, which is what I used to uh, glue on to the front. Um, and we'll walk through all of that. So. And it does come with chipboard because that is the first step is that we need to cut the chipboard pieces um, and it only takes one piece of chipboard guys so but you have to lay it out properly in order to get the chipboard to cut out of one piece for you so you need a three and a quarter by six and a quarter and you need three of those pieces and that is what the sides of the box are and then you need one that is three and a quarter by five and three quarters so I laid the three um, six and a quarter pieces down the side here and then I did a three and a quarter by five and three quarters and I tucked that into because it was perfectly across the top here that I could get those two pieces so that'll give it to you right across the top then you need the top piece and you need the bottom piece so it's three and a half by three and a half for the top and three and a quarter by three and a quarter for the bottom. Hi Yvonne, nice to have you drop in. So there's going to be some a little piece left over here and here, but by laying it out like this and um, it will, you'll get all of them out of one piece of chipboard and then cut, cut it out that way. Um, so make sure that you lay it out properly so you can get it out of one piece of chipboard. So we're going to start with that. And then um, the next thing that we do is, uh, um, I'm looking at my directions here so I don't mess anybody up. Um, you cut out the pieces and we set those aside, which is what I have done here. Why is one piece a little bit shorter than the other? Because that's where the tea bags are going to pop out of the bottom, right? So you need to make sure you've got a hole for where the tea bags are going to come out. So we cut those out first and we set them aside. The next thing that we do is we cut out from, there's a piece of white cardstock that comes. Don't need a very large um, piece of white cardstock when, that, when we do this. You have to cut out four pieces, I don't know if you can see this, four pieces that are three and a quarter by one inch. So we're going to cut out of a piece of cards, white cardstock, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, three and a quarter wide. So I've done that already. And why do we do this? We call these caps for, hi Michelle, um, caps for the tops of our, our sides. 
Um, we need them to be nice and clean for the tops of our sides. Now, where is my bone folder? All day, guys, it has been one of those days where I can't find anything. And nothing drives me crazier there it is, than hunting for stuff. Are you guys like that? Um, nothing drives me more bananas than uh, having to hunt and find things. Oh, just drives me. So I like to be organized. I'm not saying I'm tidy all the time because goodness knows my craft room is like everybody else's. But um, I do. It drives me nuts to try and hunt and find things. So I scored them. Once you cut them out, you score them on the halfway mark. So we're scoring them on three quarters. It's really hard to see. And the reason for that is because now we are going to glue them on the tops of each of these pieces. And that gives us a nice clean finish to the tops of all of our boards. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue, which I've been using all day long. And I'm just going to glue all these pieces along here. And I have a really nice um, tonic glass mat under here and I have realized that when I go to do a very nice presentation for you guys on here it gives a horrible glare I have fluorescent lights on my ceiling and the case and they're very old um, they were here when I actually moved into my house I was very fortunate to have a craft room the lady who lived here before me did stained glass. I already had a craft room in the basement with a running running water or sinks and the whole bit. Um, but there's no covers on these fluorescent lights and so you could literally see two fluorescent bulbs in the glass mat. So I'm going to have to invest in some new, new glass mat uh, or new covers for them so that you guys can't see these white strips. So I'm just gluing these little clap top um, so these, as I said, are one inch wide by three and a quarter inches. So they are the width of the, the four walls, basically, of the box. And that's just to give a clean edge for later on when we're finishing up our and gluing our walls together. And number four. So I'm putting it, I put the glue in, I'm putting one in, and I'm putting it in on the glue down on the other side. And I can take my bone, big bone folder and just make sure it's getting in there. Okay, so I've now done that. I can now set that aside. So the next thing I do is I take the paper that has, if this is um, Nan, the mint a number four out of the package, which is the China dishes, and this is going to be for the inside walls. So I am um, going to glue it onto the sheets of paper now or onto the walls. And again, you're going to match up the shorter piece with the shorter chipboard. So that is going to go on to this one. And we're just gluing them straight on to here. Really doesn't matter which side you do. Does They're all there, there's no difference. One. chipboard I'm using here is actually the Minte chipboard, but any chipboard is going to work. Of 
course the last one never wants to go on easily, does it? And four. Okay. So I'm noticing I've got a little bit of paper hang on this one, so I'm just going to trim the edge of this one a bit. You can see I didn't cut completely right on the line. So that one, a little bit on this one. How is that? How is that when you measure properly? You end up with it not being quite right. Just clean them all up a bit. Okay. So now, next up. So now I'm going to do the outside of the T walls. And for that, we use, we're going to use, it's a green, pinky, sprigged paper. And which is number six, and um, in the directions I wrote that it should be ten and a half inches wide by six and three eighths tall. Now, um, which is what um, I, I had been I did on the last one. Um, so I'm not actually. I just noticed I did not chop it. Now I'm actually going to make it eleven inches tall because I was finding or wide. I was finding that it didn't have white as much for folding over as I would like. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer this time. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put the, the dark green side up because what I'm going to do is I am going to take the three larger ones, so not the shorter one, which is this one here, and I'm going to put these three on the on the paper that is going to be the inside. And I'm going to stretch them out a little bit, like so. I'm going to leave a little bit of room in between, like that. And I'm going to score in between them. I'm going to leave, I'm going to move this one over here. No, I'm actually going to do it like this. I want to leave about a half an inch for folding on the outside. Half an inch, half an inch. And I'm going to score there. I'm going to score in between, in between, and at the half inch mark over here. And then I'm going to glue these on. And you want to make sure you're gluing the side that has not, because you want to make sure you're gluing down the right side. That would be very much like me to glue down the wrong side. Especially as I've been fighting with this cold. My mind doesn't want to work properly. I'm just trying to make sure I got the, yep, the scoring in between properly. And then one more. The score marks you're going to see in a second is just to help us fold them. No, that was right. Okay. Again, I'm going to take my big make sure that's set properly. Now
fold the ends up. Well, that's there. And you can see those fold lines. You can now see how we've got the three walls are going to fold. Hi, Heather. So the three wall, that's the hub of three walls of the box come together like that. I'm going to pull this out. My short little wall like this, we now take, that's the inside, and we are going to glue this like so. And you can see now why I wanted to make sure I had enough fold over and why I wasn't happy when it was a little bit less. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put glue and I'm not going to take it down all the way because don't forget this does not go all the way down. Now this can be a little bit tricky guys. And it's fat. Pinching it together to make sure you're getting the glue to hold. So do one side first. I do love the art glitter glue for this. I do find it works really, really well. So that's the one side. I'm actually now going to run the bead of glue down the front the side here. Bring this over and tack this side on. Yeah, it does dry so quickly and, and so in fact, you want to make sure when you're doing this that you've got it in the right spot. Because as we've all done, we've put it in place and had to rip it up again. And if you do it, it's okay. Okay, so there you go. you got your four walls in place now, okay? So that's how it's looking okay so what do we do next well now we put the cabinet front on so there is a sheet um, number two which has the cabinet on it and you would be fussy cutting out the cabinet um, from that sheet and it comes, I'm actually going to, um, I'm, I'm actually going to zoom in here for a second, guys, so that you can see this better. It comes with this attached to it, um, like so, and I have cut that off, all right? Um, and you're going to glue this on, and I've also cut off the legs off the bottom. I have cut the picture away from here and I am because and I have cut away from this side here the little vase from here I've cut that away and on this side as well 
I have cut away a piece. Um, and we're going to now glue this in place. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to glue this to the top of the cabinet because this gets glued to the top of the lid, like so. So when you look at the finished box, this is at the top of the cabinet, and this piece is, is going to go onto the front of the lid. So I'm going to glue this to the front of the cabinet. like so. In the kit with the instructions, I tell you exactly where to cut if you guys have any concerns about any of that. Next thing we're going to do, so we've got that in place, and so that's the front of your cabinet. So that's all sides. Uh, your cabinet, uh, the fronts and sides together. Isn't that cute? Yeah, how that all comes together like that. So now we're going to do the lids and the bottom. So I'm just going to set these pieces aside for now. And, I, and I'm laughing because you know when I pulled this, this out, I found this piece here. And it was like I was looking all afternoon for this piece. I, I was so organized. I actually had it set aside already sometimes. So um, as part of the chipboard pieces, um, we cut out two pieces, one that was um, three and a half by three and a half, and one that was, uh, what's the other side, it is a three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So one is your bottom, and one is your top. And what we, we go in, we find in the six by eight paper pad pack. The, the sheet that looks like this, that has the smaller jugs and dishes and everything. And on the back side of it is the dark wood like this. And this is what we use to cover the um, these pieces. So for the top piece, actually for both of them, I actually did just decide to use a four by four piece. Um, and I glued them on and I actually cut the corners off. And now, I'm just going to fold these up um, and I'm going to fold them in like so and I'm just going to make this is what I'm going to cover the lids with on both cases. And what I did was I took um, and that's the other one. I took some of the paper that we used for the outside and I cut um, similar, same size, and I'm using that to cover the inside. So I'm going to glue these in place. Fold them down one by one. Hold and press for a second or two. Hold and press. And by, by clipping the corners, it does make it easier a little bit to, uh, to turn them. There's not as much bulk. Very much like sewing, you know, when you, if you sew and you're trying to turn those corners just makes it that little bit easier to turn them. Mm 
Same on this other one. Oh, sorry guys, just realized I was off camera there. I forgot that I zeroed in and so um, the field isn't as big. Okay, and now I'm going to take, oh, that one is a bit more glue maybe. Now I'm going to take and put my covers over the top. One done. Outside. Inside. inside, outside. All right. So now, which one's the smaller one? Smaller one is the bottom of the box. So it fits in just by sitting on the top. So you're going to run a bead of glue along the top. I'm going to run a bead of glue along the top here. Along the top. It's kind of along the top edge of the chipboard. You're not running it on the front because that is where the opening is. And again, remember, the outside is the china. You put it in, you just set it into place, and you kind of squish the sides in, and you hold it until it all, this is tricky, guys. I'm not going to lie. But you hold it until the glue grabs it, and locks it into place. Ah. I'm having some issues with this one. Of course, when you're not on camera, it, does, it works perfectly. When you're on your camera, you have some issues. So 
So the trick is push from the front back because the gap in the front is okay because that's where you are have got the slot for the tea bag to come through. So it's which is what I'm doing right now. I'm pushing it back so that you can see there's no gap anywhere else and you just want the glue to catch and to grab. And I'll just take a couple, you know, a minute or so for that to catch. Okay, so I got it. Flip it over. So that now we're going to finish the top of the box. So with the top, we're actually going to attach a guide to help uh, lock it in place. So you end up with a scrap piece of paper that is um, 12 inches wide and you want to cut it to one and a half inches, sorry, as, uh, yeah, 12 inches wide and you want it to be one and a half inches um, tall here. Um, and then we're going to score it on halfway. So you're going to score it uh, so that it is three quarter inches long and we're going to fold it on that. We're also scoring it every, so before that I scored it every three inches. So I'm going to fold it and uh, score it. I'm going to fold it on each of those. So I'm now folding it, folding it, folding it, and I've turned it into a little mini box. See that? Like so. And I'm going to glue it right here. And I'm just going to have it check like that. I'm going to put a little dollop on the edge here just to help catch it. Not so much really because it's just touching. And we call that a box guide. Okay, and we're going to put it on the lid. But we cut a little piece of paper from the, the Minty Sprig paper line. Oh, the other thing I did do though was on each of those um, fold spots, you may have noticed, I cut, uh, so at the three inch mark where I cut, I did the folds. Um, I actually put it, I cut triangles, much again, like when we are doing sewing and we cut, um, in order to be able to do the folds, I put triangles in there as well to help fold. I'm cutting a piece of paper there, um, that is two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And that's just to kind of give it a bottom. And I'm just going to glue this in here into the bottom. I'm just going to pop that into there, like so. Now what am I doing? This is going to go in like this. So here's the guide. It's just going to simply go onto the top like this. We're just going to glue it the center of the top and you're going to center it. Like so. Now decide what you want which way you want is the front. So if you look at this, it pops in like that. But one of the things we have to do is on the front, two things have to happen. We have to put the knob, to put a knob in the center. So in the kit, a little knob comes with it. So I'm going to glue that little knob and I'm going to actually, with this one, I'm actually going to use some of the um, liquid fusion glue and I'm going to glue that in there. 
But first what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take and I'm going to glue our header on. So I'm going to put it in, I'm going to look at the lid, you can see, and I'm going to glue it. So you kind of see where this, this line is. I kind of want that to line up with that. And so I'm just going to glue that on to there. So I'm going to put a line of glue right across here. Oops. Put it in so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to line it up across there. And then that is what it's going to look like. So, so that is what it looks like when it's on the front of the cabinet. That would go on. I'm going to leave that to the last minute. Um, because while I have everybody here, I'm going to turn this like this. And we're going to decorate the front of the cabinet. So, now what we do, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, no, I'm going to leave those. You can see these little pieces of paper here. You could cut those off if you, if you really hated them, but I use them to actually help me glue some of these things back on. So this is where the jug came from, and this was over here. I'm now going to put them back on with foam dots because I want to get some of some dimension into here. So, and I'm actually going to start putting in. So, some of the pieces I've got are from the ephemeras. I've got some flowers, I've got some heart pieces, um, I've got a fork and a knife, sorry, a fork and a spoon. I've got some teacups and I've got some individual flowers. So I'm going to start putting some of these in place. So I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start by putting this back in. One of the things to consider as well is you don't want things coming out so far because the more you have them sticking out on the sides, the greater the chance of things getting banged and knocked around. So that is something to consider as you're working and, and putting things in place um, that uh, um, they could have a bigger chance of getting knocked off. So keep that in mind as you're placing things um, and where you might be placing them. So this job I'm going to put back over here. I think I'm going to put some flowers up in here. So I'm using a variety of little dots, little foam dots here. There. 
there's so many pieces of ephemera that you could choose to do whatever you want. Big heart, big flower up there. So, and then this side. I'm going to put this jug back in. I'm stuck. It's down. I'm going to take the Cooperate with me tonight. <laughs> there. There. big. Okay. All right, I think that's going to do it for that. Um, and then the last thing that I did was I splattered it with some white paint. So let me grab my splatter box. Let me take this out a bit to do this. And I've just got a little bit of... Water paint, and I'm just gonna again as much or as little as you like. I 
on the Christmas one I did some snow I took a snow pen and did a snow pen on it Okay, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to do. Have a wifey. The very last thing I did was I took some stardust stickles. And I just went over it. And I went over the flowers in a couple of places like I always do. You know, guys, how I like my stardust stickles. To add a little bit of a little bit of sparklies. And that is it. All done. Oh, got to put the, uh, I will put the knob on the top. That is it, guys. Um, yeah, love the little bit of bling. So, this is the one I showed you that I did before. I think I fussy cut out these little yellow flowers before and stuck the second little flower up there. So again, you can do as little or as, as um, you can make it. So you can see I haven't stuck the knob yet on the top. That is as simple as me just taking a little bit of figuring out where the center is. And doing that and the knob is now stuck and I will leave it to glue I will leave it to dry overnight so that's it guys it's done that took us that took us not even an hour so um, and again here is the Christmas one I did and you can see actually you can see the little can you see the little snow it's, it's kind of hard with the lighting what happens if I turn this light off? Does that help it a little bit? You can see how I did the little snow in there and some in here on the Santas and stuff. So makes great, I think of them like great little gifts for people. Um, and yeah, it actually does, the tea bags do come out through the little slot. Um, so what a great little gift. Ima teacher's gifts. Imagine what they, they'd be great little teacher's gifts or coach's gifts. Um, yeah, Heather has some in the store, um, and, um, they were, um, they were Tim Holtz, a set of three knobs. So, um, they, uh, and they came, uh, they came with, um, so, see this one is a, a little crystal one, a little white one, and then there was another little crystal one. So, um, and I knew that there was one set in the store last, or you know, on Monday when I was in the store. Um, and if you want, uh, send Heather uh, a message, and I'm sure she can get you more if you want more of them. Um, because uh, they are great. I think these are, I think this is such a great, um, great little, uh, I can see making more of these. I can see making some of these for my girlfriends for Christmas. Um and um, just, you know, it's a great little add-on to something or just a little, I mean, I, again, I just, I just thought these would be a great little coach's gift. Um, I don't know if um, what else comes in this size because I think hot chocolate is actually too big for this. But um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I'm glad to be back. Oh, Thin Mint Wafers. Oh, that's awesome. What a great idea. What a great idea for that. 
a bonus. Yeah. Good idea, Carolyn. Um, see, great minds coming together, coming out with all these different ideas. Fabulous. Um, geez, I wonder if there's anything crafty-wise that could slide out of that little slot. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, so happy to be back with you guys. And uh, have a great long weekend. Make sure you're taking time for yourselves and finding some time in your studio and spending that time um, doing something you love. Have a great week. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Uh, have a great night, guys. Bye-bye.